On Monday afternoon, the Atlanta Falcons traded longtime veteran quarterback Matt Ryan to the Indianapolis Colts for a third round pick while taking on a $40.5 million dead cap charge, which was also the largest dead cap charge in the history of the NFL. They then signed veteran quarterback Marcus Mariota to a two year deal as he had previous ties with current Falcons head coach Arthur Smith from their Tennessee days. And Tom Pelissero reported this is effectively a one year deal with a $12 million option for 2023, and he could be off the roster a year from now. So now the question has to be brought up of what are they doing, what is the long term plan, and how can they get back to forget winning division titles, but consistently being at or above 500, which is something they haven't accomplished since the 2017 season and have done just three times since 2013. Well, in today's video, we are going to break everything down, so without further ado, let's begin. I'm sure everyone watching this is thinking the obvious, CJ Stroud or Bryce Young and to take your pick for whichever of the two the Falcons prefer, but there's a couple of things I'd say in regards to that. And for those that may not know who they are to quickly address, CJ is the current quarterback for Ohio State and Bryce Young is the current quarterback for Alabama and each are regarded as the top two quarterback prospects for the 2023 NFL Draft. They are routinely brought up because this quarterback draft class of Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis, and Matt Corral are not regarded as a strong draft class. But the issue or concern I have with this is, no joke here, about a dozen teams have been linked to CJ or Bryce because the thought process is, oh, well, if they play bad this year, they'll just draft another quarterback, and this isn't shocking, but they can only go to two teams. But you routinely see, oh, well, the Texans are playing the long game, or the Lions are going to start Jared Goff this year in hopes he's bad enough for them to snag one of them next year. The Panthers, Atlanta's division rival, are going to be bad in 2022, and they're going to try and get one of those guys in what would also be a new head coach after Matt Rule would subsequently get fired. Then you dig a little deeper and have the Giants because Daniel Jones may not work out, then maybe even the Dolphins with Tua, the Commanders with Carson Wentz if he doesn't work out, and you get where I'm going. No joke right there, I just named close to a quarter of the league. And you can even go further than that. So I don't think the thought process of open tanking is this wonderland or this green grass on the other side of the fence people think it is. And on top of it, you 100% severely risk the morale of the few good players you have in this franchise, like Kyle Pitts, AJ Terrell, and Chris Lindstrom, to say, hey guys, we know you only have one shot at the NFL and your NFL dream, and for a very limited window of your life that, oh by the way, you've worked your entire life for, Please don't mind if we take a year of that to suck and to lose games just so we can potentially have a better shot at competing three or four years from now. And one thing I'd like to say within all of this that people haven't brought up a lot is CJ or Bryce Young are not guaranteed to be good. They're not going to walk in next July in Atlanta for training camp and say, okay guys, we're going from 2-15 and 15 to 14-3 and three this year, and I'm throwing 40 touchdowns as a rookie. And if Tom comes back at 46 years old or whatever, we're going to beat him in the NFC Championship game. That's not going to happen, and there is a chance they would get to the NFL and be a draft bust. Again, to be clear, I'm not saying that they are, but of course there is a chance. And on top of it, even if they got one of those guys, this Atlanta roster right now is flat out bad. Like, truly, truly bad, as there was a tweet that said, who's stopping this, and this was truly comical as I spit up my drink when I read it, but the point stands. Atlanta has no receivers on their roster right now, and even if they draft Traylon Burks, Garrett Wilson, Drake London, whoever you deem to be the best receiver of this class, it's not going to be hard to stop a rookie receiver when you can effectively double team that rookie receiver and Kyle Pitts and say, okay, Cordero Patterson, the running back, beat us. This is a truly awful team right now, and as I record this, their receiver depth sharp is led by Tajay Sharp. And this isn't a team where you say, oh, that's fine that we don't have a good offense because we have a kick-ass 85 Bears or 2,000 Ravens defense that all we have to do in today's league is put up 17 points and we'll win 11 or 12 games because that's definitely not the case. 
This is a team that has no number one receiver, and of all things, yes, shit luck plays into it here, as your number one receiver was suspended an entire season for gambling. That is extremely unfortunate, but even if they had Calvin Ridley, it's not like they go from 4 wins to 14 overnight. They don't have a true number one pass rusher, their O-line has several holes in it, and Caleb McGarry, a former first round pick, has been downright woeful at times, and as you'll see here, here's Nick Bosa handling him pretty much without any struggle whatsoever. And out of the most important positions in football, you have no quarterback, and I don't include Marcus Mariota to be one if he turns his career around great, but you can't definitively say right now that he is their franchise guy. You don't have good tackle play, there's no consistent pass rush, and nobody for a veteran quarterback that hasn't consistently started since 2019 to throw the ball to, and while I have slandered the shit out of the Falcons, I want to say I absolutely love AJ Terrell and think he is both a, one of the most underrated players in all of the NFL, not just the NFC South, and B, a franchise cornerstone for them for years to come. Now, to make matters worse for Atlanta, yes, they do have Kyle Pitts, and I don't want to diminish what he did in his rookie season because it was spectacular, but that wouldn't be fair to just, you know, slander Kyle Pitts, but it is unfortunate they passed on both Micah Parsons and Justin Fields, and less than a year later, this franchise is turned completely upside down. My biggest fear with this franchise is, by dumb luck, they win too many games in 2022 and end up finishing the year 4-13 or 5-12 and and not having a top 3 pick. That would have them in the range of just outside where CJ and Bryce go, and unfortunately for Atlanta, there is a very good chance if they do not finish with a bottom 2 record in the NFL next year, then they won't have a shot at either of those guys, which would effectively put this tanking effort to waste. And over the past few years, this has been brewing for the Falcons, because since the 2016 and 17 run, where they went to the Super Bowl and then went to the divisional round of the playoffs, it's been extremely downhill for them since, as in the last four years, they have compiled a 25 and 40 record with three of those seasons having seven wins. In a weird way, I guess credit to them for finally saying we've had enough and let's blow this up because of the lack of success. And three seven win seasons in four years is arguably worse than having what the Jags have had in the past two years, because while Atlanta obviously hasn't been good, they haven't been bad either, or truly bad, and Jacksonville will more than likely walk out of this with both Trevor Lawrence and Aiden Hutchinson, which is a lot more than Atlanta can say they have on their roster. I I truly think the best thing they could do at this point in time when they're on the board at number 8 overall in April is to field whatever offers are available and trade back because this team needs good football players. They're not a receiver away from competing with the Bucks for the NFC South, or maybe a good rookie season from a linebacker away. You know, maybe a few players that we are perceiving as average, if they step up and have elite career years, then maybe they compete. They're not even close to that. They're miles away, and when they select at 8, with the way the draft process has gone for him, there's a chance Kayvon Thibodeau is there, and at that point, I would either draft him or try and straight up rob a team and start by getting this year's first, next year's first, and shoot for another second round pick in there as well, whether that would be this year or next year's. That's a pipe dream, and remember, this is a rare class where pass rush is deep, so they could still trade back and potentially draft someone like a George Karloftis from Purdue, and have a team's first round pick for next year as well. And by the way, that's not limited to just pass rush, as there could be a team like the Green Bay Packers who may want to trade up in front of every receiver needy team there is, between the Falcons and themselves at pick 22, and also a team that needs a receiver in the worst way after Devontae Adams became a Raider, and a team that has two first round picks to offer Atlanta. Normally, I wouldn't condone this strategy, but it's not an exaggeration to say the Falcons are truly awful right now. On top of it, I did want to note this. They released a thank you video for Matt Ryan on Twitter after the trade, and it was 51 seconds long, and when Drew Brees retired, they released a thank you video for him that was a minute and 16 seconds long. How do you release a thank you video for your bitter rival's quarterback that's longer than your own franchise's quarterback as he gets traded away? I mean, come on. Even in the best case scenario for this team, and Marcus Mariota has a career year, 
you're looking at yet another seven, maybe eight win season, and honestly, with the Falcons' luck that they've had, that may be a possibility for them. But what does benefit them strongly is the trade haul they received for Julio Jones, which was a second round pick, and as previously said, this is a team that just needs good football players. Forget the Miles Garrett's, Nick Bosa's top few picks of the world, they just need decent football players to get back to seriously competing. And in a weird way, having the Bucks with Tom Brady in the division buys them some time because no one expects them to compete with them, much less beat them, as this year is pretty much a consensus from everyone that the Bucks are going to run away with the NFC South as they should. For Atlanta, though, have as much of an Oklahoma City Thunder approach as you possibly can and hoard those picks, because you're going into 2022 right now with Marcus Mariota as your quarterback and Tajay Sharp as your number one receiver. I do expect that to change, please let that be known. This is nowhere close to competing for every team's end goal, and that's ultimately a Super Bowl title. Compile those picks and build for a better tomorrow. And with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, now is the time I ask you to please leave a like and subscribe to the channel as it would truly mean the world. We are closing in on 40,000 subscribers, and I cannot thank you guys enough for the support. And until next time, as always, please be safe and have a great day. Love you guys.